to the editor of the Times. Sir, the century is rapidly reaching a close, and most Londoners are viewing it with trepidation and fear. It seems that violence and murder are becoming an everyday occurrence in our fur city. I, for one, see the new epoch as a chance for England to lead the world into a reign of enlightenment. This bloodshed that curses humanity will end, and England will shine as a beacon. God save the Queen, Lord Godalming. Good morning, Alexander. Where's Arthur? I would have expected him here leading the charge. He sent a message saying he had to attend his coachman's funeral this morning, but hoped to meet us after Juliet's funeral at noon. When I checked on them after our scare last night, Regina said they hadn't seen anything, much less a wolf. I think we're all right, for now. Excuse me, message for Dr. Seward. For me. Good Lord! There's been a fire at the asylum. At least one person is dead, and several more are trapped. I must be off at once. Yeah, we all need to be about our duties. We meet at Anna set after Juliet's funeral. No, I can't wait, wait, I almost forget. I need a steak so big and pointy. Oh, and a mallet too. Good point. Yeah. Seward seemed ill after getting his message and must deal with a fire at the asylum. Things are happening so quickly now, and I fear that after the funeral, everything will be out of control. your manuscript and found it absolutely fascinating. The most fantastic part refers to this ancient amulet of power. Not only would it be part of a ceremony to raise the dead, but it would allegedly allow its wearer to appear as anything or anyone he desired. This amulet would not operate on its own, however, requiring a user already powerful with magic. I have reason to believe the trinket this legend is based on may really have existed. Please see me at your earliest convenience. Respectfully, Dr. Randall Briarcliffe. Dr. Briarcliffe's message may be the clue to clearing up this mystery. Mere days ago, I would never have believed such an amulet could exist. Now? Dear Alexander, this is a dictaphone recording of my last conversation with Renfield, made the night before he died. It did not strike me as surprising then, but now, please listen to it. I need someone to confirm my suspicions. Dr. John Seward. Dr. Seward sent me a dictaphone tube he wants me to listen to. Now, where have I seen a dictaphone? Dr. Breyer.
I'm still weak from my shock at the university. May I never again see a sight as horrifying as that. Why do I feel like Dracula knows my every move? 11.45 a.m. God, what a mess. If you're waiting for Dr. Seward, it'll be a while. He's gonna be busy for some time. Dr. Seward's asylum was a wreck. I wonder if the vampire had anything to do with the fire. I feel bad about taking the stake and mallet, but I have a feeling we'll need them. Twelve oh five PM Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. She's got loved ones to come see her off. I was pity about that fella earlier. I guess no one wanted to see a headless corpse. <laughs> I says, you got to make what friends you can while you're still alive. That way, it ain't so lonely when you're gone. <laughs> Another funeral, this time for dear Juliet. If only I could believe she truly rests in peace. But that is not the case. Action must be taken. something of urgent interest to the both of us. Please meet me at my house at 9 p.m. tonight. I received a note from Arthur asking me to meet him at his house at 9 p.m. I wondered what he could want. secret, but it will do you no good, for now you must pay! Alfred Horner tried to kill me today. In the struggle, his neck must have broken. It's obvious that he was no vampire. I was unconscious for quite some time. Daylight starts to fade away. 
The night will soon possess. Tomorrow brings the sun again. But now it is time to rest. Hello, Alexander. What are you doing out here all alone? Juliet? If you were mine, you would never be alone. If you were mine, you'd be mine forever. I can't believe it. A secret chamber in the Hades Club. I swear that the voices behind the wall were that of Devlin and his lackey, Alfred Horner. I believe Goldacre is going mad. I heard the voices of Devlin and Anisette coming from behind the bookshelf, but for all my strength, I could not open it. I fear I have lost Anisette forever. Rebecca, just some of the most curious drawings. Oh, well, that is odd. Oh, that must have been left by your friend, Mr. Goldacre. Oh, that's a peculiar bloke, that one. He was standing right where he is now, muttering away. Devlin Goldacre continues to amaze me. Why would he leave a napkin covered with drawings of crosses at the Saucy Jack? What could he be up to? That's disgusting. We must be doing it and doing it tonight. If we do not drive a stake into Juliet Adams immediately, heaven help those who be her next victim. Well, I've had no luck tracking the demon down. I've checked with every shipping clerk I know. I suppose Dracula doesn't make the same mistake twice. Our only option now seems to be stopping Juliet. All the death we have already seen. Even Renfield is dead, having been consumed in the fire at my asylum. I don't know if I'm capable of joining you tonight. These events have left me rather weak. I'll stay here with Seward. After all, Anisette's already been attacked once. This way I can stay close to Regina. That sounds like a good idea, my friend. The rest of us is meeting at the cemetery before dark. I did not look forward to the plan Van Helsing has proposed, but I know that it is the only way. 
I hope we are prepared to carry it out. Are you all right, Mrs. Harker? Call me Nina, please. I'm fine, really. Well, you seem worried about something, Miss Mina. <laughs> Miss Mina is what Quincy used to call me. Can I confide in you, Mr. Morris? Certainly. I am very disturbed. I see glimpses of the Count in my mind. How? How is this possible? I carry a bond with him from years ago. At times I see him as though through a fog. What do you see now? It may help us find him. He appears different than before, but familiar. He seems close to us, very close. I'm glad to know Mina Harker trusts me, but I'm worried for her. She still has a psychic rapport with Dracula, but she sees only hazy images of him and cannot yet identify the fiend. I fear this stake and mallet will perform a most grisly task. I'm here in a sense. No, Alexander! It's not fair! No, Alexander! 
On top of everything else today, now I have helped kill Juliet Adams. I know she was already dead, but her scream will haunt me for the rest of my life. You fools! You fools! How you do this? You sleep and the monster will come! Stay back, you boom. But how did Dracula get in here? Well, if none of you is protecting Anna then it falls to me. Also, I must hypnotize her as I want to mean. So I pray we find out what the demon be up to. Is that wise? Won't that tip Dracula off to our plan? Then? What plan? We have no plan. But, Doctor, what can I do? Anything? Anything at all? Do I look like an old man? Out, out, all of you. You're no good to me here. How could I have let this happen again? I should have stayed with Anaset and fought that beast with my own hands. I fear for Van Helsing's safety. Hello, Alexander. Won't you come in for a cup of tea? No, thank you, Regina. Is Arthur about? No, I'm sorry. He went out on business earlier. Is there anything I can help you with? No, I don't want to bother you at this sad time. How was the funeral this morning? Oh, it was sad. But still a moving ceremony. <laughs> well, it, it's a comfort to us all, knowing that there is life after life. Well, thank you for your time, Regina. Please tell Arthur I called. It is always a pleasure to chat with Regina Holmwood. She is surely one of the most polite people I've ever met, and a comfort in such trying times. No! Stay with Anaset. You, you, uh, that paid again. <sighs> Dracula, the demon himself. I felt his raw evil as soon as I saw him. I swear that I will do everything in my power to stop him before he can kill again. I agree with your self-diagnosis, Doctor. You appear to have suffered a stoppage of the heart. Oh, is there anything I can do to help? Mina, what are you Anna doing? Anna said, where is Anna set? Mr. Goldacre told me Van Helsing wanted to talk with me right away. He said he would watch Anna set. Van Helsing has sent for no one. <laughs> Rest, Doctor. Don't try and talk. Holmwood! Holmwood is... Off. What's wrong? Anna set.
things have become desperate. I must stop Dracula immediately. I fear that the lives of Anaset and all my friends hang in the balance from this moment forward. Anaset is gone, but where? Regina, where's Arthur? Regina! Regina? Dracula must have slain poor Regina months ago. Somehow he has used his accursed amulet to reanimate her and make her appear alive. I was a fool not to see the link between Devlin, Arthur, and the Hades Club earlier. I heard the voices of Devlin and Anaset coming from behind the bookshelf, but for all my strength, I could not open it. I fear I have lost Anaset forever. Your old friend Van Helsing sends his regards. His final regards. Now Anaset will be mine, and you will die. <laughs> Reverend Jenkins has consecrated this cross for me personally. This napkin with crosses scrawled on it makes little to no sense.
Well, Quincy, it's through. I feared your great sacrifice might have been for naught, but we won. Now Anisette and I look forward to the coming dawn and a bright new year. How cruel are the fates. Arthur and Regina never had a chance. Dracula gave them no warning he had returned. Thank heaven it's over. Yeah, it is over, my friends. And we are all alive. Dracula is gone forever. Ha, ha, ha. 